He had uh, said that uh, Paul McStay was coming back into the side. So uh, two changes from the Celtic side, which played in the drawing game against Hearts at Tynecastle. Tom Boy comes back, which means Mark McNally drops out, and uh, Paul McStay, as we said, in at the expense of John Collins, who's on the bench this afternoon. The other Celtic sub is Andy Walker, and uh, Gordon Marshall is the substitute goalkeeper. And let's have a look uh, at Aberdeen's lineup. A few changes there from the team which lost at Tottenham to Motherwell a week past Saturday. Uh, Michael Watton for the suspended Theo Snelders. Uh, Stuart McKimmy is back. Uh, Paul Keane has dropped out. And uh, Brian Grant also called back to action. Duncan Shearer dropping to the bench. So here come the teams. Paul McStay. The Celtic captain leading his men onto the field and their new chain strip gets its first hearing this afternoon and uh, Stuart McKimmy leads out the Aberdeen players. Well, Stuart McKimmy has been criticised a lot this season by sections of the Aberdeen support but it is an afternoon for experienced players and uh, Roy Aitken who was talking to Alan McAnally downstairs says that the men he's put out there this afternoon are there for their battling qualities. That's uh, absolutely right, I think uh, Roy also said in an interview that you know, he really is picking from game to game now and the team that he's picked today he hopes he can do the job against Celtic to pick up the three points which is three points that Aberdeen really really need and I think the fact that you're talking about Stuart McKimby and Celtic is, is the players that really have to stand up now I'm sure Big Roy is very pleased that you know Jesse's back to something of himself and they'll be hoping also he can go on the score sheet today. A notable inclusion today is Big Brian Irvin back in the squad today. Not only in the squad, back in the team. And I think Big Roy obviously wants to try and stabilise the defence a little bit. And let's hope the big man can get back to some kind of form that got him into the Scotland squad. Well, Brian Irvin, of course, uh, enjoyed Scottish Cup success here, scoring the telling penalty in the penalty shootout back in 1990. was recalled as the Aberdeen Colours last week. And uh, Paul McStay will be mightily relieved to be back in the Celtic side after being dropped by Tommy Burns. He's certainly looking fit and relaxed out there. So 11 of the last 14 games between these teams have been drawn, so I think uh, that gives us an idea, Alan, that uh, this is going to be a tight encounter. Well, I'll, I'll settle for a draw, well, it's a 4-4 draw, Jerry, but uh, let's hope that, that they can... I mean, both teams really need a win today. Another draw for Celtic would be, apart from, OK, another point but it's really not enough for them at the moment, as it is not for, for Aberdeen. And really, they'll be hoping that they can start to not only make chances, but let's hope that they can start to, to put them away. And not only, you know, they've been ahead in a lot of games this season and not managed to hold on to it and let the other team back in. And that's, I'm sure, something that Tommy Burns has stressed to them today, that if they get in front at all, they want to kill the opposition off. So, yeah, Van Hoydonk uh, had a fitness test. Just an hour or so ago, and he's come through it. Uh, he has a groin problem, and Celtic will be hoping that uh, he can get through the 90 minutes this afternoon. It'll be interesting to see how both, time, both teams line up here. Andrew Waddle, the FIFA referee, highly experienced official in charge of this match here at Hampden Park. So away we go in an important afternoon, and say especially for Aberdeen as they attempt to stay in the Premier Division. You've got to imagine they will survive, but uh, they know there's still a job of work to be done. Celtic still have an avenue to Europe uh, via the Scottish Cup, but they'll equally want to play three points this afternoon. So Jess playing it through to Dodd, but, uh, all the way back to Bonner there from Tom Boyd. Best of kick out from the Celtic keeper, but McStay gets it further forward. This is Van Feydonk. Stephen Wright in ahead of McLaughlin. And that ball goes off Joe Miller and out for the throw in. It was just to see Big Roy Lutz is always playing exactly the same shape from our last live game, Jerry, that he played against Rangers. The only difference being Joe Miller on the ball now, out wide on the right as he was out wide left, two through the middle, and young Stephen Glass out on the left hand side, hoping to get down and out round side Celtic get the ball into the box for Dodds and Dion Jess. So a free kick awarded to Celtic. Brian Grant going in a bit heavily there on the Celtic skipper Paul McStay. So it's played shot to Tosh McKinley. Through now for Faulkner. Simply Faulkner and Van Hoydonk have put a bit of a partnership together. And this cross wins the corner kick conceded there by Gary Smith. So that 
brings a big roar from the Celtic fans. Celtic trying to make an early impact in this game. And uh, Brian O'Neill, who carries the danger from set pieces, has moved just into the Aberdeen penalty area. Well, it appears that the ball has been lost. It's been retrieved now. And uh, it will be Brian McLaughlin to take this one. And Hoydock standing just in front of Michael Watt. Testing afternoon for the Aberdeen keeper. He does have first team experience, but uh, he doesn't. Uh, he hasn't enjoyed the best of records here in Glasgow against either the Old Firm or Partick Thistle. Has to be said. This is Boyd for Celtic. And Boyd losing out there, but uh, Peter Grant was anchored just behind him. That's McStay playing it through. It's cut out by Gary Smith. Cleared high towards the halfway line. So this is Celtic's 101st home league match against the Dons. Celtic very much have the upper hand, having won 55 to Aberdeen's 20. Van Hoydonk calling for the ball, but uh, Bonner elects to throw it. It's play through by Boyd. This is Smith. Stay gets a touch for Celtic. Edwin challenges, still Celtic have it though. This is Grant. Paul McStay. McStay trying to create an opening here. Gary Smith blocked the effort. Celtic being roared on here by the fans. And they have to throw in. tightly marked and again at Celtic's ball just in line with the Don's penalty area it's Tosh McKinley onto the left foot that's a good cross and the glancing header there from Willie Falk now right across the six yard area Celtic looking in determined mood here it's Tom Boy providing the cross it's Brian Grant who got it away from the danger area fans well pleased with what's happened in these opening minutes although there's still no scoring and that's comfortably dealt with by Michael Watt now, a good little spell from Celtic all started from Paul Mosley when he got the ball only one thought in his mind was going to have a shot and goal almost got it in the goal was the shot was blocked but a good little spell from Celtic there that will certainly give their fans hopefully something to save up and look forward to this afternoon that's Mowbray playing it wide to Boyd. There's no flag as Celtic get plenty of players forward. It's Van Hoydonk. Has to backtrack a bit. It's Boyd uh, running for the return. Celtic claiming he was impeded, but the referee allows play to go on. This is Ian Jess for Aberdeen trying to find Miller. Celtic have it again, though. This is O'Neill. Stephen Wright and the break's on here he's got Joe Miller with him Celtic players giving chase so let Stephen Wright Miller gets into a good position but uh, the Aberdeen fullback scooping the ball high into the air Miller was looking for it on the ground he peeled away towards the far post but that's uh, an early lesson for Celtic who have been making all the running and suddenly a good interception there by the fullback and uh, you'll see Miller running with him Miller started to peel away to the left hand side towards the far post hoping that the ball could be played through to him on the ground. Yeah, it was a great pace by Stephen Wright there. Just the cross at the end wasn't of good quality, but it certainly showed a clear pair of heels to the Celtic defenders there. It almost caused an opening for, for Aberdeen. So just a, an early warning for Celtic that there's the press for the opening goal. Aberdeen can counter attack to effect, but here comes Celtic again. It's Josh McKinley. Little header on there by Faulkner. Away by McKimmy. It's McKimmy again. This is Ray McKinnon, former Dundee United player, trying to get forward for Aberdeen. And the referee indicates that's Aberdeen's throw. This is Dodds. 
Brett plays it through the offside flag is up there against Ian Jess flag going up uh, just below us from the main stand linesman Jim O'Hare from Glen Boyd so deal now for Celtic picking out McLaughlin nice little touch on by him to Faulkner Irvins with him all the way though behind for the corner kick and the Celtic appear to be prepared to take chances as they go for this opening goal pushing everyone forward at every opportunity and uh, Mowbray now along with O'Neill is moving towards the edge of the area so plenty of aerial threat here that's not a good corner kick it's away by Dodds only as far as Peter Grant back out to McLaughlin Challenge there by Grant, and that uh, goes behind for the goal kick. Yeah, a little bit unlucky. Grant, he was a good ball out by Grant, although a little bit too pacey. Brian McLaughlin, who are young player of the year for Bells this month in February, just couldn't control it. And gave Brian a little bit of time to come down and shut him down, and thankfully it was a high kick for Aberdeen. So Neil winning that one partly. It's done by Irvin for chest to chase and a good hand defending by Mowbray. And Celtic fans will be glad to see him back on the side. His experience so vital. And uh, I'm sure O'Neill can learn a lot from him. Again, it's Mowbray. Touch on by McKinley. It's Peter Grant. McKinley again to O'Neill. Mowbray. For Faulkner, lays it off now for O'Donnell. O'Donnell took it well. Good running by O'Donnell, and that's a free kick. So O'Donnell looking more and more like the player that Celtic paid 1.75 million for. He loves to run at defences. And it's just a defeat taken away from him there. The best bit there, Jerry, was his, his weighted running. He waited till Willie could get the ball under control. He didn't get too close to him, and all Willie had to do was drop it for Phil O'Donnell to run onto. So can Van Hoydonk conjure up something here? He certainly strikes the ball extremely well. That's a good effort. Uh, Michael Watts watching that one carefully as it dropped beyond his right-hand post. Certainly plenty of curl in the ball, just a bit too much. The goalkeeper going with it, and uh, not a bad effort at all by Van Hoydonk. Well, when Brian Scott had Pierre out for a pre-match warm-up or fitness test, I should say, this morning before the game, he tied a couple of them into an empty goal and was hitting the target quite regularly, so I wasn't surprised to see him take the onus upon himself and have a pot at goal. Unfortunately, that time just didn't hit the target. The interesting thing, Alan, is that uh, John Collins uh, usually has a monopoly on the set pieces for Celtic, so we might see a bit more now from the, the Dutchman, and obviously he's a talented player who does strike the ball exceedingly well. But uh, here comes Celtic now through Mowbray. Touch on by Faulkner. The back pass from Brian Grant. Well, the goalkeeper wants a touch on it, and it's uh, deflected off O'Donnell. This is Tosh McKinley. Well challenged up. Still Celtic. Push forward. Getting great backing from the fans here. This is McLaughlin. Drifting one to the far post, but uh, no one coming in from that side. And the ball off the corner flag and behind for the goal kick. A good bit of skill from Brian McLaughlin. He did everything right, took the return pass and then just wanted to take too many touches on it. I think he had an opportunity to get the ball in maybe a couple of steps before when he did. It's always easier from up here. Still, he looks very lively in the first 15 minutes and causing Aberdeen a few problems. So Mowbray with Dodds. That's a free kick against the Celtic centre-back taken by McKinnon through by McKimmy picked up by Jess stays in there for Celtic it's away to Gary Smith through now looking for Dodds Tosh McKinley does well though under pressure good defending by the former Hearts player Celtic getting tremendous vocal backing from their fans here this afternoon McKinley with the throw. Faulkner's doing well in the air, getting a lot of touches, but uh, 
high dunk surrounded uh, by Aberdeen players. This is Stephen Glass. They get through. It's a good ball for Jester Chase. And the well, referee indicating that uh, the ball's off the Aberdeen player. Ian Jess is not happy with the decision. Mowbray going in there. But, uh, Mr. Waddle had absolutely no doubts as uh, Mowbray made the challenge. So a goal kick to Celtic. So young Stephen Glass sending that pass through for Jess and uh, the young player that uh, Roy Aiken has been speaking quite a bit about this week. But, uh, he's uh, mature beyond his years and uh, that's exactly what's needed for Aberdeen at the moment. Here's Joe Miller, former Celtic player. And he wins a free kick. Well, Miller played extremely well against the other half of the Old Firm in our last live match at the Tottenham three weeks ago. And they've got to impress again this afternoon. Well, Stephen Wright goes in support. Thread the ball through to Dodds, but it uh, was cut out by O'Donnell, who was back defending. It's played through by Tosh McKinley. Watch carefully by Smith. And, uh, he sends that one out of play. Well, he was pressured a bit by McLaughlin, but he'll be disappointed. He certainly had time to get the ball back up the field. I think he'll be disappointed, Stephen Wright, Jerry. He never, you know, he never really got back to make any sort of pass for Gary Smith. And Gary, all the way played into the space, the ball just went tamely out of the park. Sabarin's ball. Come on, Faulkner. This is Stephen Wright. This is Dodds. Caught there by O'Neill. Play on, says the referee. Grant plays it through now, looking for Faulkner. Ball just dropped behind him. This is McLaughlin. Faulkner again. Getting in a good cross. Stays well forward, this McLaughlin again, he's out jumped to by McKinnon. Boyd's there, backing up for Celtic though. This is McLaughlin, Tosh McKinley's going in a good run, that's well cut out though by Stephen Wright who had spotted the danger. Now it's Aberdeen on the counter-attack through Joe Miller. Stepping away from McLaughlin and from Grant. That's the Aberdeen, Grant Bryan sliding in. Stephen Wright looking for Dodds, but uh, Bonnard alert to that situation, coming right to the edge of the area. Now it's Tosh McKinley. Again, looking for the head of Faulkner. That's a free kick against the Celtic man as he went into the challenge with Brian Irvin. Yeah, well, he's got into a few of the headers, a few of the long balls from Celtic. I think he's just using his, his whole body and his elbows were high there against Brian Irvin. The referee quite ready to give a foul. And that's a free kick. Celtic's way this time. O'Neill was nudged by Dodds. by Tosh McKinley, Faulkner, we ball through now to Tom Boyd, Kimmy goes to meet him, so 15 minutes played here at the National Stadium, Celtic nil, Aberdeen nil, but a good open game, Celtic making most of the running, but, uh, Aberdeen showing that uh, they can hit them on the break. in there for Celtic does well. Tosh McKinley, leaving it now to McLaughlin. McLaughlin stepping away from Grant. Good play by McLaughlin. Well, the chance was on for a shot there, but he uh, decided to keep the run going. Tom Boyd's running his support. He cuts inside again, though. Looking for O'Donnell. And the ball goes behind for the corner. Well, you know, Brian McLaughlin still to score his first goal for the Celtic first team. There was a little gap opened up for him there. And uh, he doesn't seem too keen to have a pot at goal. That's maybe something Tommy Burns will have to talk to him about. Just holding on to it that bit too long, but uh, he has the corner, which is about to take. O'Donnell. Back to Tosh McKinley. That's out of play from Joe Miller for the throw. 
to Celtic. So it remains a fine sunny afternoon. A little bit on the chilly side, but uh, conditions ideal. And, uh, despite the snow and the rain, you know, the pitch has dried out well. It's hooked high out of play by Brian Irvin. Celtic and Queen's Park taking the precaution yesterday of putting down pitch covers to make sure that uh, this game went ahead. So it's down from Van Hoydonk, claims for a handball there uh, against uh, Gary Smith, but uh, the referee was well positioned. This is Brian O'Neill. Play by Smith. This is O'Donnell driving it through. It's Irvin who clears. It's picked up now by Jess. Through for Dodds, Mowbray comes across though. Nice little touch by him to O'Neill. Now it's Boyd. McLaughlin has uh, switched over to the right hand side now. That ball drops it behind the defence. Cross comes up and not. And just as well he was here, the ball dropping in behind Gary Smith. And Irvin provided the cover. Weinerman did well there, getting across, came across the man he was marking, to the danger, but really Aberdeen at six and sevens at the back at the moment. So another corner to Celtic. Van Hoydonk is well forward. Lachlan delivers it, it's Mowbray who gets a touch. And behind goes the ball for the goal kick. So, Tony Mowbray, very much back in the plans of Tommy Burns after his injury problems, and of course, Personal problems as well. He hopes now to concentrate on football. There he is again, getting in a good header. Nice little touch by Van Hoydonk. This is McLaughlin still looking lively. Now it's O'Donnell. Peter Grant. Now it goes to Boyd. Some of the fans are a bit frustrated that McLaughlin didn't have a pot at goal. High one in from Tom Boyd. It's away by Irvin. Only as far as Tosh McKinley. Celtic really pinning the Dons back here. It's Peter Grant. Cross now to Boyd. Back it goes to Mowbray. Celtic really will have to get their shooting books on here and try and cash in on their territorial advantage. Certainly getting Aberdeen back towards the 18 yard line, but. Uh, not really testing Michael Watt. It's McLaughlin playing it through now to Tosh McKinley. Stephen Wright has the pace to go with him all the way, and it's another corner to Celtic. Uh, Stephen Wright always in control there. He did have the pace over Tosh McKinley, but he you knows he's having a word there with Joe Miller. They really have to double team in those sort of situations, and Celtic are right on top at the moment. That's a good play between McKinley and McLaughlin. So just coming up for 20 minutes of this match, still no scoring, but it's Tosh McKinley providing the cross. Again, Aberdeen defend well. Brian Grant gets it away, only as far as Peter Grant. This is McLaughlin, he wanted too much time in the ball. Joe Miller come in, but it's Peter Grant there again for Celtic. Little touch by O'Donnell as he tried to get it through towards Faulkner. This is Gary Smith now for Aberdeen. The offside flag, though, goes up against Joe Miller. That was a close call, but I think he was just side and no more, he doesn't think so. I tend to have to agree with him, Jerry. I thought he was on side when the ball was played. Drawing plenty of space there. I'll have to give the linesman the benefit of the doubt in that case. <laughs> this is Mowbray. Van Hoydonk. Grant. Mowbray again. O'Neill. Touch by Kinley's wide. It's through now for Faulkner, but the offside flag has gone up against the Celtic striker. McKinley playing the long ball forward, but uh, just offside. It's Brian Irvin with the free kick. It's through to Mowbray. That's not a good clearance. It's returned by Dodge. This is Jess. Jess sending the ball right across goal. Uh, that was a half chance for the Dons. Uh, Mowbray's initial clear is not a good one. It was returned by Billy Dodds and uh, Jess sent the ball right across the face of the Celtic goal. 
Martin Forshill's sight, you know, one's had of the, the Celtic goal. I don't know if I'm convinced that I'm about playing up front with Billy Dobbs. He was very, very effective out wider on the right against Rangers. It's a completely different position. I prefer him to go at people rather than have his back to go as often as he does when he plays in the role that he's playing today. Well, that might be an option for Roy Aiken later in the game if he decides to bring on Duncan Shearer. I'm sure that's in his mind, Jerry. Maybe Duncan's only getting back from his injury, don't forget. I'm sure Roy will introduce him at some point in the game today. This is Boyd. Back there by Gary Smith. Van Hoydonk plays it through, but uh, there's no one there. Roy Aiken under a lot of pressure in the remaining games of this season. Nine games left after today. Four at Cotodbury, five away from home. This is Joe Miller. It's Jess. And Anil just does enough. Stretches in there, gets the ball to Bonner. So we're midway through the first half. Still no scoring here at Hamden Park in this Premier Division match between Celtic and Aberdeen. This is O'Neill. Wide to Boyd. Through for Faulkner. It's quickly closed down now by Gary Smith. Kinnan taking the ball for a walk deep inside his own half. Simply through by McKimmy. Headed away by O'Neill for Celtic. Lead off by McStay. This is Boyd. Looking for Van Hoydock. But it's Gary Smith getting it clear. It's returned by Mowbray. That's a free kick to Celtic against Dodds. Frenchman there as a challenged Mowbray. Long one from Boyd, and Boydonk gets a better of Irvin, but uh, Faulkner had also moved in for that ball, so there was no one to, to pounce at all for Celtic. And here come the Dons now through Stephen Glass, providing width on the left hand side of the field. Mowbray goes into two good challenges. And that draws applause from the Celtic fans. Kimmy plays it shot. Stood up by Jess. This is McKinnon. Ryan Grant. Right. Kinnan a bit slack with that one, he gets a second chance though. Gives it away to McLaughlin. This is Peter Grant. And Michael Watt coming to meet that one as uh, Faulkner threatened. Oh, Pat Bonner wearing a cap against the bright sunshine. Faulkner, it's picked up by McKimmy, he withstands the challenge of Peter Grant. And that's out for the throw to Celtic. And still Celtic enjoying most of the possession. And still not managing to put much pressure on Michael Watt. It's laid down by Donald, the shot on there from Van Hoydon. Phil O'Donnell is in the forward position this time. Van Hoydon, plenty of goal, he sees everything, just doesn't connect right at all. Strangles the ball, trying to kick the ball too hard. Result with that, it's another bike hit. Still good possession by Celtic though, certainly keeping Aberdeen pushed back. Just watching Big Roy on the touchline there, he's, you know, he's saying to his Aber the, the Aberdeen midfield to try and push forward a little bit. They seem to be sitting back too much in their own defence. Giving Celtic the, the advantage of them pushing back them, pushing them back against their own box all the time. They want them to sit forward as much as they can. This is Van Hoydon. Grant. Move for Boyd who runs in support. Boyd trying to go it alone. He didn't have an awful lot of options. 
Ahmad Hoydong. Good breakdown communications there. Peter Grant was also in that area. They all left it to one another. And the upshot is a throw in to Aberdeen. Mowbray is well forward, uh, attacking the ball against Dodds, but uh, he concedes a free kick. Kimmy sends it forward, looking for Dodds. It uh, really is a bit of a, an equal struggle as he tries to win the ball in air against Mowbray. Biennial, long one now for Faulkner, he's outnumbered. It's Glass sending that one through, that's a good ball to McKimmy, good play by Glass. It's McKimmy through for Dodds, Jess is in the middle, Miller's arriving. And so too is Grant, and Brian Grant sends the ball wide of the target. Well, Aberdeen have players forwards, with a good ball through. Initially from Glass, Dodge crossed it looking for Jess, it broke away though to Grant. Joe Miller was coming in on the far side, so that was a real chance for Aberdeen. It was a real great chance, it was actually good play by Glass and McKinney in the, in the, right hand, in the left hand side rather. Good play as well by Billy Dodge and the ball comes to Brian Grant, that's coming so fast into the box to support. The ball just drops behind him, can't get his left peg round it to direct onto the target. Good signs from Aberdeen, they're starting to come back into the game, that was certainly good movement from them there. So after Celtic's early surges, Aberdeen making a couple of chances, and that will hearten Roy Aitken. I think that's exactly what I was trying to say, he wants them to push forward, he doesn't want them to be camped outside their own box, and he wants the likes of Grant and Joe on the ball now to start pushing forward into Celtic's area. This is Miller battling hard, good play by Joe Miller, but he couldn't get enough into the shot. And Aberdeen coming more and more into this game. Joe does really well here, great close control, played against and played with these players many times, he knows what they're all about, shows great feet here, just gets away, just can't direct it on target, too many bodies run about him. So Joe Miller who withdrew his transfer request after the victory against Rangers at Matodre. He's simply playing as well as he has done since returning to Aberdeen for his second spell. And well, it's a free kick to Aberdeen. So Aberdeen have got probably better goal scorers in their side than Celtic have. The likes of uh, Jess and Dodds, and if they can keep getting support from the middle of the park, they might inflict some damage. Celtic's uh, scoring record has been extremely poor this season. In fact, they've scored only four more goals than they've lost, 27 to 24. And that's Urban's header. So half an hour gone. Still no scoring. This is Tosh McKinley for Celtic. Back to O'Neill. No break. Bob Hoydonk is it off to wide. Celtic looking for an opening. And a poor first touch there from McLaughlin allows. Uh, Stephen Wright to get it away back into the Celtic half. So, uh, Billy Stark has sent the Celtic substitutes out to warm up. Just below us. And uh, maybe just a little bit of a, a warning to the players who are on the field. But, uh, a little more is required. Here's Tosh McKinley, that's a good effort. And uh, good handling from Michael Watt. And it had to be because uh, Faulkner and Van Hoydonk were both bearing in in goal, but uh, a superb shot by the Celtic fullback, and uh, that's exactly uh, what Tommy Burns and Billy Stark will be looking for. And uh, Michael Watt did extremely well. If he'd let that one squirm away from his grasp, which he might have done, there were Celtic players in possession, so well done to the Don's keeper. 
Celtic again, but uh, that's a poor ball by O'Neill. And Aberdeen have the throw. header is taken down by right and this time it's Celtic's ball and sending it through to Tosh McKinley who had that excellent shot just a few moments ago it's uh, an area of the field that Celtic will want to get Tosh McKinley into more often maybe certainly fine attacking fullback uh, and he's spell at the knee and at hearts Clinch well for that one. Mowbray's in there ahead of Jess. It's McKimmy again for Aberdeen. Good long kick by Bonner. It's off Van Hoydon, but uh, goes in the wrong direction for Celtic. Tosh McKinley, Faulkner gets a touch on, O'Donnell's arriving, and it's Brian Irvin who scoops the ball to safety, but again Phil O'Donnell coming with one of those very good runs, a high ball played forward, nodded down by Faulkner, excellent running by O'Donnell, and it was Irvin to the rescue. So McLaughlin with the corner kick. And a bit of pushing going on as O'Neill went for that ball. And the free kick awarded to the Dons. Yeah, I just sort of let the corner go there, Jed, before I came in. Personal experience speaking, it makes it so much easier for a striker when you have someone like Phil O'Donnell who times his run so well. And you know you only have to get a flick into his direction and he's going to be on to them. And he really does time his run so well. And that's one of the reasons why Celtic paid so much money for him. And there were definitely signs of that coming through in the, the Detroit Tank Castle last week. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's coming more. I think he's getting more and more confident again. We're going to see the old fellow Donald that Celtic did pay all the money for. And not only that, he scored a tremendous goal last week. I'm sure he's trying to do the same today. Well, the offside flag is up meanwhile against Billy Dodds. As Ian Jess played the ball through to him. So ten goals he has this season, Billy Dodds. Including four from the penalty spot. This is Mowbray. Sweeping that one away. It's O'Neill. Celtic centre-backs being uh, worked hard here by the two Aberdeen strikers, but uh, they get the ball away to Van Hoydonk. Nice little turn by him. It's played by Donald to Tosh McKinley. Celtic with plenty of players arriving. From McKinley, he gets another chance at it though. Fires in the cross. Phil O'Donnell comes in here, and again it's Irvin who gets it away. Still Celtic have it. And the ball goes behind on this occasion for a goal kick. And Michael Watt has taken a knock. Well, Tosh gets a second bite at the cherry. I think it's Willie Fonda that gets the head in. Again, it's that Phil, man Phil O'Donnell that's in the further forward position. Really brave going in for the challenge. Unfortunately, just couldn't get enough on it. You can see Tosh puts the ball into the back post. Faulkner with the header. Phil almost getting enough on it. Just clashing with the goalkeeper. It's all right asking Phil O'Donnell to go forward all the time. But you can't ask him to do it all on his own. There has to be other Celtic players helping him along the way. But he almost opened the score for Celtic there. still receiving treatment, anxious moments he's for Aberdeen and uh, he certainly took a sore one there <laughs> I'll let you explain that one Jerry live television, I've got to keep out of that one so happily for Aberdeen Michael Watt getting back to his feet he's got twi uh, under 21 honours uh, has Michael Watt he's uh, been very much in the shadow of Theo Snelders in recent years Roy Aiken looking reasonably relaxed. Of course, uh, he's been through a lot of uh, big games here at Hamden as a player. So happily for Aberdeen, uh, Michael Watt has recovered. Derek Stilley is the reserve goalkeeper this afternoon for Aberdeen.
is McKinnon. McKimmy. Yes, McKimmy keeps his run going. He topples just inside the box. But, uh, there's no reaction from the referee, who was just yards away. And Waddle shakes his head. It's Urban's head up. Nobody loses out in that one. It's Dodge trying to get forward. Dodge does well to keep possession, Celtic players buzzing all around them. This is Joe Miller. Switch of play for Glass. And he allowed that ball to go out. Well, he seemed to have time to gather that from the crossfield pass from Joe Miller. And the ball just out of play, and Aberdeen had uh, plenty of players forward. So that's another opportunity for them to do something. This is McLaughlin. Nice little touch by Peter Grant. Still Celtic have it through Boyd. This is Mowbray. O'Neill. Tosh McKinley wide. McKinley just uh, a bit shot with that one uh, on a bare part of the pitch. The ball bubbled a bit. Nice turn by Peter Grant. This is next day. Tosh McKinley goes on a good forward run. He's had to retreat a bit though. And it all breaks down for Celtic. Well, McKinley had gone on a good run. He wasn't spotted. And uh, the chance was gone. And then some slack play by Brian McLaughlin. Play through now by Boyd for Faulkner to chase. And one against one here with Irvin. Really has to do a little bit too much there, completely on his own. An aerial battle with Brian Irvin, it's not the easiest. Really have to get players up among Willie to help him there. This is Mowbray's head out. This is McLaughlin, but uh, Stephen Wright challenge as well. Let's play through by Grant. Neil climbs for it. This is Joe Miller again switching the play. Well, a good pass. Again, it's uh, Stephen Glass. Does better this time, but uh, first touch from Dodge, letting him down there. Ball breaks away now to Tom Boyd, and Hoydock runs ahead of him. It's McKimmy who challenges. It's a free kick against Stuart McKimmy. He just appeared to catch the Celtic fullback on that run. Certainly better run by Tom Boyd. He certainly looked a little more like the Tom Boyd at Celtic. We want that foraging forward. He gets a free kick for Celtic. Taken by Boyd. Back to Boyd it goes. He's closed down by Glass. Goes for the line, gets in a good cross. It's a way though by Irvin. A bit of pushing going on, and he's pointing down to the penalty spot. The referee indicating pushing there. So it was Boyd doing well, getting away from Glass, getting in the cross. The referee started indicating that uh, there was a bit of pushing going on, and then he pointed dramatically to the penalty spot. Boyd getting in a good cross, right up in there with Van Hoydonk and the referee, you can see reacting. So a moment of drama here at Hamden Park and a chance for Celtic to take the lead. It's Van Hoydonk to take it. It's 1-0 to Celtic. about penalties which were not given this afternoon 
one has been given which has displeased Aberdeen greatly certainly the referee was very well positioned he seemed to take just a bit of time before he pointed to the spot but he indicated with his arms that he thought uh, Brian Irvin had uh, pushed Pierre Van Heidel as Boyd played the ball into the middle well Celtic have a corner now and uh, Aberdeen can be in all kinds of trouble well, Jerry, I can assure you any time any cross is put into the box there was always some kind of contact but really that wasn't any blatant push at all and even when Waddle pointed the spot he didn't do it with any great and like, urgency nevertheless gave the penalty and Celtic a one-nil ahead well Aberdeen wouldn't want to lose another one here right before half time and it's Dodds who comes back to do some good defending so that's a dreadful blow for Aberdeen in their battle against relegation. There's no doubt about it, when you're down there, the bricks tend to go against you. But that was an awful kick out there by Pat Bonner. He was under no pressure whatsoever. I think Vaki must be coming out in sympathy for Michael Watt there because really he's under no pressure at all. He just kicked the ball out of play, gave Tom Boyd no chance of retrieving the situation. Aberdeen pull it back here just a couple of minutes ago to the interval Iwin played in but just beyond McKinnon that's McLaughlin who's back helping out in defence that's Aberdeen's ball so a couple of minutes of this first half left a throw in to the Dons just in the line with the Celtic penalty area Miller sweeps in the high one Warner watches it carefully and that's a good catch by the Celtic keeper through now by Boyd, cross comes Irvin. Laughlin wins that one, slid off by O'Donnell, this is Tosh McKinley. These are dangerous moments for Aberdeen, Van Hoydonk comes in but uh, Gary Smith gets it away and a touch on by Stephen Glass but the cross comes Peter Grant now for Celtic. Uh, you can hear the Celtic fans roaring at Grant for backtracking, they want him to go forward. Really, an opportunity for Celtic to push through there for the kill, and uh, Peter Grant checked his stride, and uh, the home fans not at all happy with him, and it all broke down for Celtic. They are trying to get forward now, that's a free kick against Paul McStay. So we're inside the final minute of the first half. And no doubt there'll be a great debate about that award of a penalty kick to Celtic just a few minutes ago. Roy Aitken has a lot of talking to do to his players at half-time. Certainly cruel and Brian Irvin, who's uh, defended stoutly in this first half. Made a couple of very good interceptions for the Dons before conceding the penalty kick. Here comes Celtic now through Tom Boyd. Again, it's Eamon Tors Faulkner, who's had a lot of success there. It's Van Hoydonk. Still, it's Van Hoydonk. And he just wanted... Uh, an extra touch on the ball there, it wouldn't roll for him, and Aberdeen scrambled it away. But it was a real opportunity for Celtic. As the ball was played in Tor's box again, good climbing by Faulkner. Good first touch by Van Hoydonk, good second touch, but then he was caught by an Aberdeen defenders. Here comes Celtic again now. This is O'Donnell and Faulkner. Well, they both left it to one another, eventually Faulkner stabbed at it and the ball dipped behind for the goal kick. And certainly hit a lot happened in the last couple of minutes. That would have been a great goal by Pierre Van Huydonk. It just fallen on a little bit further to his left foot. Defending did, Aberdeen defending did well. And there it was after you, after me, between Faulkner and O'Donnell. Couldn't decide who was going to have a shot and goal. And in the end, well, he just put it over the bar. But a good spell of pressure from Celtic and they're ending the first half in a real high. That's Mowbray's head up. It's away by right. Miller shields the ball well, it's right again. A long one now for Dodds to chase. Mowbray gets his head to the ball. So just over a minute of stoppage time played in this first half. The referee Andrew Waddle checks his watch and uh, looks out towards the linesman. Long one from Bonner, it's a turn by Brian Grant and the half-time whistle sounds. Well, a controversial end to this first half. Failed to kick awarded by Mr. Waddle, after he had judged there been a push on Van Hoydonk by Brian Irvin. So the half-time score here, 
at Hamden Park as the teams leave the field is Celtic 1, Aberdeen 0. Brown shows no changes in either lineup. Aberdeen have uh, Duncan Shearer and Peter Heatherson on the bench. Celtic have John Collins and Andy Walker. So referee Waddle gets the second half of this Bell's Premier Division match underway. And uh, Roy Aiken was waiting rather angrily for the referee on the track side at the end of the first half. And certainly it was a soft penalty, of that there is no doubt. Ryan Urban raised his hand, but uh, Pierre van Hoydonk just uh, toppled to the ground and the referee gave the kick. So that'll be certainly a controversy to be spoken about for the next day or two, especially the position Aberdeen find themselves in. It's a free kick against Mowbray, who feels that uh, that shouldn't have happened. Uh, he was involved there with uh, Dodge. Not easy for Big Tony when you're against a small strike like that. More often than not, it looks as though you're coming over the top of them. Really standing his ground there and getting Aberdeen a free kick. So can Aberdeen get themselves back into this match in these early stages? of the second half. It's floated in by McKinnon, well away by Mowbray, who still has uh, his left foot in his hand. This is McKinnon getting the touch for Aberdeen. Gary Smith plays it through. It's knocked away, though, by Tosh McKinley. And Hoydonk climbs for it. And that ball's out of play. And the flag is up on the far side. intended for Dodds but uh, Dodds pulled out of the run and uh, goes safely through to Pat Bonner the Celtic goalkeeper uh, Pat Bonner thought his Celtic career was over in the final match of last season against Aberdeen at Petardry when he got back down to Celtic Park Lou McCarry freed him but uh, Tommy Burns brought him back and he's the number one choice again it's uh, Aberdeen's ball played there by Stephen Wright uh, off the Celtic player. So Tosh McKinley with a header. Played by Irvin. Stephen Wright gets a touch. But, uh, the ball breaking through to Tom Boyd. He plays it early. It's well cut out though by Stephen Glass. Through now for Jess, who's wide on the left-hand side. Muller's gone through the middle uh, with Dodds. This is McKimmy. Flipping it through, looking for Dodds. Away by O'Neill. Well, as far as Brian Grant. This is Wright. That's uh, Miller. Never even have to settle for the throw-in. Dodds coming to beat the ball. Kimmy goes in the supporting run. He's got Glass just ahead of him. Plays it in field though. Nicely left by Jess looking for Dodds. It's Faulkner who gets it away only as far as McKimmy. Everton trying to pin Celtic back here. This is Peter Grant and uh, he can't control the ball. And Aberdeen have got themselves a corner kick. And a chance to get back into this game. And uh, Brian Irvin start to move forward to the edge of the area. Well, Brian Urban certainly carries the goal threat from set pieces. He's enjoyed his successes against Celtic. Just fails to get to that one properly. It's away to McKimmy. Now it's Grant. And sending in the cross. And Mowbray did well to get his head to that ball. And uh, it's Bonner who knocks it behind. Well, Mowbray reacted just as Irvin was coming in on goal, a good cross, 
forwarded into the middle. And you can see Mowbray there just ahead of Irvin. And uh, Bonner scooped the ball away with uh, Dodge threatening. And it's Joe Millard who sends in the corner kick. It's Mowbray again getting his head to the ball. Irvin's up there battling for it. Jess is in there. It's Peter Grant now for Celtic. Getting the ball away only as far as Gary Smith. So 50 minutes gone here at Hamden. Celtic leading by one goal to nil, but Aberdeen doing, doing a lot of attacking here. They've been very determined indeed, no doubt. Wound up by the manager at half time. They'll feel an injustice over the award of Celtic's penalty. But uh, Celtic know that another goal could perhaps finish the game as a contest. However, the flag is up against uh, Faulkner. Uh, Celtic have certainly failed to finish off opponents so often this season. That's why they've had uh, 16 draws in the league. And in 10 of those 16 draws, seven times they've taken the lead and seven times they've failed to finish things off. And they do it this afternoon. But they're up against a very determined Aberdeen side here in the early stages of this second half. This is Stephen Glass. That's McKinnon. Cross to right, Grant's just ahead of him, this is Grant, away from Tosh McKinley, and from Phil O'Donnell, cross field pass to McKinney, Glass is there in support, he's got time to get the cross in, he hurries it a bit though, it's away by Mowbray, comes off Van Hoydonk, then slides Boyd, takes the return from the Dutchman, and the offside flag is up again, and again it's fought up, he was trying to get back onside, but uh, it certainly seems to be a different Aberdeen team to start the second half. A few harsh words by Roy, I'm sure. They certainly seem to be a little bit more up to it, and a little bit more urgency about their play. Smith floats the ball forward. Irvin's up there again. And Aberdeen have another corner. Well, Brian Irvin is starting to unsettle the Celtic defence. He's pushing forward at every opportunity. Irvin enjoyed his best scoring spell last season with uh, seven goals for the Dons, but he's crowded out there. Breaks down to Brian Grant, but he just can't keep that one down. Again, Irvin was in the thick of things. Celtic managed to get the ball away just outside the area for uh, Grant's shot at goal. You can see there you've got three men round big Brian Irvin, and I'm just wondering when Big Roy's thinking of bringing on Duncan Shearer, which I'm sure he may do at one point in the game, because if Brian Irvin are causing Celtic a few problems in the air, then I think Duncan Shearer may do the same now. I think a more attacking Aberdeen team will cause Celtic more problems than they're doing at the moment. This is McKimmy, who's uh, the close down by Peter Grant. Aberdeen's ball. Stephen Wright takes the return from Grant. It's going down by Dodds. This is McKimmy. That's Glass. Good skills by Glass getting away from Boyd. McStay comes across to try and cut him out. That's a good cross. It's off the bar from Joe Miller. Behind for the corner kick, well, Joe Miller sending the ball against the Celtic crossbar. Great play by Glass on the left, and Miller's header crashing back off the crossbar. Well, I'm really pleased. I was going to say two minutes ago, I'd like to see Stephen Glass take someone on the outside. A good cross in, and Rejo is very, very unlucky. This is Glass. So I think still under a lot of pressure here. They've been still well forward. It's McKinney trying the shot over the target. Well, Aberdeen playing with a lot of passion here, and uh, you've got to imagine if they could do this every week, they wouldn't be in the position they're in. We saw them three weeks ago raise their game against Rangers. They're raising it again against Celtic. Joe Miller so unlucky there. And really, Roy Aitken, not to mention Willie Miller, uh, must be 
can come on performances like this, they really should be able to do it far more often. Aberdeen have got themselves into a corner, they're trailing here by a goal to nil in controversial circumstances. But uh, they're certainly looking at the moment as if they can get themselves back into this match. And of course, just as in the early stages when Celtic were making the running and Aberdeen were counter-attacking and uh, causing one or two flutters, Celtic might just uh, do that to the Dons. They'll have to be extremely careful. The goalkeeper's out of his box here. And Paul McStay almost got on the end of that one, but Stephen Glass did well, and uh, Glass wins a free kick. Well, McKimmy is on the ground just outside his own penalty area, having taken a knock in those exchanges. Well, it's an awkward one for both the defender and the goalkeeper, right on the edge of the area. Michael Watt coming to meet it. McKimmy with him and uh, with Faulkner there in close attendance. The ball broke away to both of them. Paul McStay almost got in the end of it, but uh, Stephen Glass came across to get the ball away from the danger area and then won himself a free kick to take the pressure off Aberdeen. A perfect example of how often you play with each other. Stuart really taking the full brunt of Michael Watt coming through. The only good thing in the collision is that Aberdeen managed to clear the danger. And Stuart's OK to continue. And he takes the free kick for Aberdeen. It's away by Mowbray, who should his ground well. Done by Gary Smith. Bonner watches it carefully as Dodds comes in. Just in that instance here, Gary, exactly what Tony Mowbray to Billy Dodds there, Andrew Waddle gave a penalty to Celtic for in the first half and yet never gave a foul. It's a big stay for Celtic. Kimmy stretches in, picked up by Peter Grant, he stumbles at the vital moment, it's pulled through by Irvin. This is Dodds, Miller's running forward, Jess has started a run, McKinnon's arriving, Dodds takes his eye off the ball, he was planning where he was going to put it and ran away from him. Aberdeen have the throw in. So I think he had so many options, he just really didn't know what to do, couldn't choose the right one. And his urgency to try and do it, just couldn't control the ball properly. Kimmy's throw, looking for Jess. Yules with him. This is Grant. Switch a player for Stephen Wright. Wright again. Grant, Mowbray clears, played off by Faulkner to McStay, who tries to put it into the path of O'Donnell, swept away by Gary Smith, a touch on by Stephen Wright, cut out by O'Neill, this is Tosh McKinley. It's O'Donnell, Boyd moves forward, a lot of space. Still it's Boyd. Again, not. This is Joe Miller. Well, he's a lot to do here. Still, it's Miller. It's Dodge twisting and turning, trying to get away from the attention of Tosh McKinley. He does well, gets in a good cross. Bonner loses it there as Jess challenges and uh, Tom Boyd sweeps it away. It's a throw in over towards the corner flag. Good play again by Aberdeen. That's an excellent cross. Bonner went for it with Jess. Lost it in the air. Dodds providing the cross. And as all of that is going on, Aberdeen have got themselves another corner kick uh, conceded by Peter Grant on the opposite side. So Aberdeen keep the pressure on. Again, Brian Irvin moves towards the edge of the area. It's Joe Miller to take it. Irvin's up there again, he gets the touch, and uh, Bonner takes it comfortably this time. Again, it's Brian Irvin that gets on the end of the cross. And when he goes, you really have to take a chance and hope that he's going to get a contact on it. And his colleagues really have to be alive round about in front of Pat Bonner so he can't take it as easily as he did there. So John Collins uh, just below us is preparing to come on for Celtic. As uh, Mowbray gets in the header. This is uh, Ryan Grant for Aberdeen. Followed by Ryan Hill. Played 
by Tosh McKinley. The offside flag is up. Uh, Peter Grant had started a run, but it was Van Hoydonk uh, who was caught just offside. So Celtic will make that change now. It's uh, Brian McLaughlin who's leaving the field. John comes John Collins. Collins has certainly been one of Celtic's better performers this season, so Celtic will go now to 4-4-2. Four, four, Van Hoydonk up front uh, with Faulkner. And no doubt uh, John Collins will try to get through on the left-hand side and provide as much width as possible. It's a substitution that wasn't uh, universally greeted by the Celtic fans because uh, they want to see more of uh, Brian McLaughlin. But uh, in fairness to Tommy Burns, McLaughlin not uh, showing a lot second half. Well, Jerry, I think it's just a straight swap. Collins for McLaughlin. I think you're, it's safe to say you'll see a fired up John Collins because I'm sure he wouldn't have been happy to have been left out today. Collins wins the throw-in. to chase, Mowbray's there though with O'Neill it's played out towards Collins it's Aberdeen's ball this is Jess, Dodds Stephen Glass Jess is there in support McKinney's arriving towards the edge of the area for Celtic and behind for the goal kick There's a chance for Celtic really just about to sew it up well, it was Tosh McKinley that had to play the waiting game making sure they weren't offside Wee John went from deep from midfield caught them off caught them on the hop and almost made it 2-0 for Celtic very unlucky and that would have been a great start for John man on Boyd so free kick to Celtic breaks away out to the left to Collins and certainly looking effective in a few months as it come on it's driven in but the offside flag is up against Van Hoydon it was Phil O'Donnell who played the ball across the area in the direction of the Dutchman laid off by Collins but uh, the flag had gone up it was certainly a close one but uh, in any case, Michael Watt blocked the ball. We had a waddle, steps in towards a free kick to Celtic, and a bit of protesting going on. And uh, the yellow card comes out, and uh, McKinnon. A bit of arguing there with the referee. And certainly, the player's elbow uh, caught Grant. So McKinnon shown the yellow card. And again, he starts with the free kick to Celtic. This is Tosh McKinley. Phil O'Donnell getting his head to the ball, but uh, just too many Aberdeen players around him. Stay. Watch McKinley. 
Poor ball by the Celtic fullback. So Aberdeen now planning to make uh, a substitution. Duncan Shearer is warming up uh, just below us. It's Joe Miller trying to get through, but uh, Josh McKinley digs in well with uh, 65 minutes gone. And Celtic still leading by one goal to nil. But Aberdeen about to make that change. Well, you're going to be hoping that Celtic don't get a second one before Shearer can come on. Well, the offside uh, flag is up the other end of the field. It's a free kick to Celtic, and that'll give Aberdeen a chance to make this change. Duncan Shearer uh, will come on, and uh, it's Ian Jess who's leaving the field. Well, Jerry, just before all that was happening, I really can't believe you never gave a foul against Aberdeen. When Phil O'Donnell was going through there, because one more step and he was almost on goal to go with a goalkeeper. His legs were blatantly taken from him, and the referee never gave a foul. It's also a deal with a free kick for Celtic. It's played through by Glass, Mowbray's there. This is Boyd. Mowbray again for Van Hoydonk and that's a free kick against Gary Smith well, Celtic uh, had possession still but uh, no great advantage and the referee decided to give the free kick against the Aberdeen defender Tom Boyd being told to come back by the referee who says that uh, the ball was still moving the free kick was taken. So Boyd floats it in. It's put it down by Van Hoydon, but behind for the goal kick. A great understanding of the forward positions by the Celtic players this afternoon. Knocking the ball down, but uh, seldom there's uh, support where it matters. So Roy Aitken and Drew Jarvey shouting instructions to their players and uh, hoping that. Uh, Shearer and Dodds and uh, Miller all playing up front can get Aberdeen back into this game. Here we are facing an awful lot more pressure if they leave Glasgow with nothing this afternoon. Here's Collins. Collins calling for a free kick there as Van Hoydock was challenged by McKimmy, but uh, still Celtic have it. Collins plays it through. That's Aberdeen's ball. Back to last season, Aberdeen, Aberdeen took uh, five points out of the possible eight in the four Premier League meetings between the sides. This season, there have been two nil-nil draws. Celtic, of course, defeated Aberdeen in the League Cup semi-final. Match played at Ibrox Stadium. So they've all been tight encounters, and again this afternoon, Celtic leading by one goal to nil. That's, uh, Gary Smith getting his head to that ball. Peter Grant follows up for Celtic. Support from Collins and from Boyd. It's Collins on his left foot. He had the opportunity to shoot there and uh, let it go. And uh, Aberdeen get it away. Well, Brian Irvin remonstrating with the referee and uh, saying that they should have played advantage because the ball went Aberdeen's way into the path of Joe Miller. But uh, it's Aberdeen playing it through now for Shearer to chase. And Neil's with him. That's a free kick against the Don striker. The referee indicates so there was a bit of a, a push by him. So a free kick to Celtic, keep inside their own half. Well, I don't know how clear an opportunity that John Collins would want to shoot there. That was a perfect example. It really could have had a shot on target. This is certainly another opportunity missed by Celtic. Free kick to Celtic against uh, Brian Irvin. This is Josh McKinley. It's Collins. Touched off the ball by 
Raikkonen. Collins, that high dunk. Goes well through the ball to Grant. He tries to get through to Tosh McKinley. So Neil climbing for that one and a free kick against him. Lift the pace again. They certainly enjoyed a very good spell in the earlier stages of the second half. He's played in towards Irvin and topples to the ground as he went for that one with uh, Mowbray. Well, Roy Aitken just below us and Drew Jarvie we were looking for something there. There certainly wasn't a lot in it, but <laughs> not a lot more than was uh, in the penalty kick. And uh, Les Mortram, who's the fourth official this afternoon is uh, asking the Aberdeen manager to uh, stay closer uh, to the enclosure down there. This is Collins, backs away to Grant, nice little touch by him, Collins again to Boyd. So will Celtic finish off Aberdeen or will they again let opponents off the hook? Well, Van Hoydonk lets that one slip away from him but Celtic have the throw-in in a line with the Aberdeen penalty area. It's Collins. McStay. Boyd. This is Dodds. That's oh, McKimmy. Trying to get the ball across field, which he succeeds in doing to Stephen Wright. That's Joe Miller. Wright runs support, good running by the Aberdeen fullback, showing plenty of pace, getting it a good cross, a chance for Shearer, and Bonner makes an amazing stop on the line, great play on the right hand side by Stephen Wright, running on to that pass from Joe Miller, getting in a real quality cross, Shearer had timed things perfectly, got in a good header, good downward header, Bonner did ever so well to stop that one, and a real chance again for Aberdeen, here comes Celtic, it's Faulkner. They cross it out to Tosh McKinley. And the offside flag is up. So what a chance for the Aberdeen substitute there, Duncan Shearer. And Pat Bonner very much to Celtic's rescue. Well, that was one of the reasons Big Roy bottom on. He knew he'd be involved. It was a great cross from Stephen Wright. Mike Duncan did almost everything right. Big Packy made a great stop for Celtic to keep them in the game. Brian O'Neill has taken a knock to the face as he went for that ball with Shearer. And uh, certainly Shearer's elbow made contact with the Celtic player's face. The referee rightly allowing some treatment for the young Celtic defender. Meanwhile, Aberdeen have made a change. Uh, Brian Grant has gone off and on has come Peter Heatherston. So Peter Heatherston, a player who's been around uh, Falkirk, Watford, Sheffield United, a second spell at Brockville and then to Wraith Rovers before moving on to Aberdeen. So here's the challenge again, is, uh, are the, the chance I should say for Shearer, the ball being played in by Stephen Wright. has recovered and that's uh, Mowbray getting the ball away for Celtic. So Gary Smith playing it through, Irvin's well forward, topples to the ground but uh, he gets nothing for it, he's limping a bit as Celtic try to push forward now, Van Hoydock plays it high in the air, it's headed away by Wright, done by Peter Grant, this is Wright again for Aberdeen, it's cut out by O'Neill, this is Tosh McKinley, Faulkner there with Irvin, in comes McStay, and it's a free kick against Faulkner. Stephen Wright floats in the high wind, looking for Duncan Shearer. So to get it away, little touch on by Paul McStay. And as far as McKimmy. That's a free kick against Boyd, Flip the heels there of McKinnon. Free kick to Aberdeen, and perhaps a chance to do something. Brian Irvin again moves towards the edge of the area. So 
Aberdeen have committed both substitutes. Again, Connors there to collect the ball for Celtic. And the Celtic defenders uh, crowding out the Aberdeen attacker. Yeah, again, a perfect example of when Brian Irvin goes to the ball, you know, he, he does enough to put the Celtic defenders to get the ball away, and really there's no Aberdeen player in front of Paki Bonner, which really would have, would have a perfect opportunity for a, a, a quite a simple goal, but again, there's nobody reading the situation for Aberdeen. And they really have an uphill battle in this last 15 minutes here. They're still Celtic leading by one goal to nil. This is glass for Aberdeen to McKimmy. Smith switching the play. This is Heatherston. Gets it forward. It's all a bit untidy at the moment. And the referee indicates a free kick to Aberdeen. Very animated, waving players forward as Gary Smith delivers the free kick. And wins there, but that's a free kick against them. As he challenged Brian O'Neill. An afternoon of some frustration for Brian Irvin so far. Having conceded the penalty kick and uh, the referee judging there that uh, he had fouled O'Neill. So a free kick to Celtic. By Faulkner, Collins goes for it. Stephen Wright clears for the Dons. That's a free kick against the deal this time as he challenged Shearer. It's quickly taken. This is Heatherston playing it through for Dodds. Well, Dodds had to play that one early. Tony Mowbray was breathing down his neck. Shearer was arriving, but uh, in the end, Bonner dealt with it quite comfortably. And Billy made a good run, but really the ball was going very fast. He just wasn't quick to get onto it. He only tried to direct the ball across the goal, but really no problem for the big man in the Celtic goal. It's played through by McKimmy. Dodds as well forward, it breaks for him. He tries to lob the goalkeeper, but puts too much into it. And another chance goes a begging for Aberdeen. Nothing will go right for them this afternoon. The ball broke well for Dodds. He tried to loft it over Bonner. Billy really did almost everything great there. He was feeling, you can see his hands out to try and find out where Brian Hill is. But they couldn't believe his luck that the ball actually dropped him as well as it did. And when he sees that again, he really knows he should have scored there. And Aberdeen have had so many chances this game now. Is it going to be the day that they just cannot score? So just under 12 minutes left. Celtic lead by one goal to nil. And Poydonk's penalty in the first half. And here comes Celtic again. Good run by John Collins. Celtic getting players forward, still it's Collins. Now it's O'Donnell. Tosh McKinley. Gets in the cross, Van Hoydonk's there! And he gets his second goal of the game, and that surely finishes off Aberdeen. Tosh McKinley doing ever so well on the left-hand side of the field, swinging in an excellent cross. Van Hoydonk. For Celtic, and it's Celtic 2, Aberdeen 0, McKinney absolutely caught there. It's a great cross by Tosh McKinley, it's exactly this, but the first time Tosh has really got to the byline, put in a deep cross, the big man's in the right place at the right time, Shoot McKinney can do nothing, the big man buries it and it's 2-0 to Celtic, and maybe today we're going to eventually finish someone off and collect three points, well, a welcome three points and really pile the pressure on for Big Roy at Aberdeen. So Tosh McKinley delivering an excellent cross and he's starting to settle into his role with Celtic. It was uh, John Collins initially in on the move, Billy Donnell was there and then Tosh McKinley took the responsibility, got forward and despite the attentions of Stephen Wright still managed to get in an excellent cross at the far post for Van Hoydonk to climb above McKinley. So the Celtic fans in full cry now and uh, maybe about to witness something that's been a rarity this season in the league. That's uh, 
three points at home. You know, when Celtic went into the first game against the Dons way back in October the 8th, here they were unbeaten, the last unbeaten team in the league. Uh, here they come again. They were the last unbeaten team in the league that day after 10 games under Tommy Burns. But uh, since then, the good form, like Aberdeen's, has been extremely poor. So this will be cheering for Tommy Burns and for the Celtic fans this afternoon as they try to push in two fronts for a European place. Second place in the league, of course, gives a UEFA Cup spot. And Celtic also still very much involved in the Scottish Cup. But for Aberdeen, it looks like being another very long journey home this evening unless they can conjure something up in these closing minutes. They certainly played well in the early stages of the second half. They weren't capable of an equaliser. They will complain about the Van Hoydonk penalty, but they certainly can't complain about his second goal. He put it away extremely well. And uh, he, like uh, Phil O'Donnell, is starting to repay his large transfer fee. So just under nine minutes left. Celtic lead by two goals to nil. save themselves there's a chance on now for Dodds but the flex up on the far side well nothing will go right for Aberdeen but the flag was up before Dodds struck that ball he certainly hit it well with just seven minutes left but uh, offside I don't think there's any doubt about that the flag went up before he struck the ball so another afternoon of frustration Aberdeen, just nothing will go for them. This is Paul McStay for Celtic. And again, the offside flag is up against Billy Faulkner. Well, Celtic also have uh, nine games after today, like Aberdeen, four at home here at Hamden and uh, five away. They face Patrick Thistle, Motherwell Hearts and Rangers here, and uh, Kilmarnock, Hibs, Aberdeen, Falkirk, and Dundee United away from home. Of, uh, of course, the Scottish Cup matches. Whatever still has to come for them in that competition. So we're just under six minutes left now. So Collins for Celtic. Pick off Van Hoydonk. Picked up by Gary Smith. Stephen Wright goes on a run. Just over hits that one up. And Aberdeen playing like a beaten team now. Put a lot into this game, but uh, a cruel blow struck against them just before half time when Celtic were awarded penalty kick. And then Roy can knows that time is running out just in this game, but in Aberdeen season. Thistle have 
games in hand. Still, things more difficult for the Dons. And here comes Celtic again, trying to add to their misery. Collins clips it through. Miller battles hard, but uh, the odds are against them. Collins and Grant combined. This is Mowbray. And the offside flag is up against Van Hoydon. Smith hitting the high one forward. Dodge is there with Mowbray. Mowbray holds him off. And that's a goal kick. Good strength by the big man there. He thought about putting it back to Big Packy, then realised he had the situation in control. Just held Billy Dodge off. Nothing he could do about it. It's been a hard afternoon for Billy Dodge. I think if his anticipation had been a little bit better, a little bit more awareness in the box, he may have had a couple of goals today. As it is, which is always going to be on the losing team again. So just under four minutes left. Celtic lead by two goals to nil, both from Van Hoydon. It's a free kick to Celtic. So Celtic fans just minutes away from uh, a rare occurrence picking up a winning bonus. In the league this season, they did, uh, the players did a deal with Tommy Burns, the no bonuses for draws. They've suffered greatly with uh, 16 drawn matches in the championship this season. A bit of financial cheer for them. There have been reports that uh, Aberdeen players have also forgotten any bonuses uh, they might have had, but uh, they will receive monies if they manage to stay in the Premier Division. You've still got to fancy them to stay up because of the quality they have, but uh, when you're down there and the situation they're in, it ain't easy. Of course, many people have cited Nottingham Forest as an example in recent seasons of a team that uh, people said wouldn't go down, and they did. It's not looking quite comfortable now. It's uh, Heatherson pulling it through to Joe Miller, who's worked so hard. A crossfield pass from him to Glass. McKimmy runs in support. Dodge still battling away with Mowbray, and he gets a free kick, just in the line with the penalty area. Aberdeen are going to do something, they'll have to do it very, very quickly indeed. Again, Irvin moves forward, pushing just about everyone to the edge of the penalty area. That's all they can do now. It's Glass who delivers the cross. It's away by Mowbray, only as far as McKinnon, out to Stephen Wright. Left foot by him and uh, cleared by O'Neill. Just under two minutes left. And the Celtic fans away to our right, bathed in sunshine and enjoying certainly the result from the team this afternoon. This is right. Ederson, the electric run away though to Peter Grant. Irvin, challenged by O'Donnell, in comes Collins, the ball's still in play. It's O'Donnell, Paul McStay goes in a run, it's played though back to Collins, and it's Tosh McKinley who laid on Celtic's second goal, plays it through looking for O'Donnell, Gary Smith's there for Aberdeen, he runs into trouble in the shape of Van Hoydon, and it's a free kick to Celtic. Well, he's fortunate there were other defenders in the area because uh, he might have got himself sent off for that just to complete an afternoon of absolute misery. Yeah, I think he'd know. I don't know if he had any option, but he certainly did right thing, hanging on to Van Hoydonk. Van Hoydonk just took the ball off him. Gary just held on to him. Nevertheless, it's a free kick for Celtic. I think that would have been rubbing salt into the woods today had he sent off Gary Smith. Collins plays it through looking for the next day, and it's McKimmy ahead of back to his goalkeeper and uh, Michael Watt does well to keep that one in play so we're well inside the final minute plus any stoppage time to be added on by Andrew Waddle this is Josh McKinley the offside flag is up as uh, Collins goes forward Celtic with a 
their hopes of uh, giving the European football some good with this result this afternoon as we move into stoppage time. Tommy Burns will be hoping it's something they can build on in the remaining games. When you look at it before today, only Patrick Thistle's record worse uh, than that of Celtic and Aberdeen. And as I said, Thistle have played fewer games. Thistle winning five so far before today. Celtic and Aberdeen winning just six out of 26. This is uh, Tom Boyd for Celtic. Well into stoppage time now. It's McStay. Cross comes up and he gives it away though to Van Hoydon. McStay's well forward here, but uh, the offside flag is up against the Celtic skipper. Just it all pleased. Aberdeen get now will be consolation. Okay, ball lofted forward. It's Dodds clipping it through. This is Hellerson. Collins is with him. Stephen Wright provides a cross. It's away by Mowbray. And, uh, Hellerson accepts the throw in. Just over a minute of stoppage time played. So Joe Miller laying it off. Hellerson tries to play it in. Miller throw into the Dons, quickly taken to Joe Miller. Ederson again, back to Miller. Ederson provides a cross, the header in from Dodge, just dipping over the crossbar. Yeah, I don't think really that's a bit as close as Aberdeen have came today, although I think, like I said before, I think a little bit more awareness, a little bit of anticipation, they may could have gotten a goal or two. Certainly good defending uh, by Celtic today, I've kept them to a limit. And really, it is a long, long road in for Aberdeen now. And really, from something they could have taken from the game, Celtic have looked very, very comfortable in the last 10 minutes. A welcome three points for them. But really, it's a hard, hard task for Roy Aitken in these last game, these last remaining games. So the final whistle sounds. Handshakes between the managers, but as Alan said, a lot for Roy Aitken to do. There's the man who scored both of Celtic's goals this afternoon, Pierre van Hoydonk. The first from the penalty spot just before half time, and then a header after 78 minutes from a very good cross by Tosh McKinley. The final score at Hamden Park is Celtic 2, Aberdeen 0. This test before the game, and I think the Celtic supporters will be very glad that you did. Yeah, uh, before before the game, it was not for sure, not for sure that, uh, that I would play. I had uh, a crown in my leg, and it wasn't right, and I'm glad that I can play. You scored two goals, and there was a bit of a doubt about the first one. Was it definitely a penalty? No, I walked behind, and yeah, um, at the moment I, uh, I want to jump. Uh, the defender, number five, I thought, uh, he pushed me a little bit. But when you walk behind uh, and they hit you a little, yeah, you fell in front. Mm -hmm. And it was absolutely not a dive, because maybe tomorrow the papers will come again, and a dive, a dive. But, some uh, referees uh, whistle for it, and some uh, not. So Van Hooydonk didn't dive, you didn't have to dive for the second one. A lovely cross from the left and a powerful header. Yeah, fantastic cross by uh, Tosh McGinn. And I only uh, had to put my head against it. You've complained before when Celtic have gone one up and lost the game, but obviously they, they really pushed forward to get a second goal today. Yeah, but I think today we played tac tactically very good. In all the other games when we lead, uh, one nothing. We we go in front, in front, and attack, attack, and then the the, uh, the other team score the goal. And now we play. Sometimes uh, we keep the ball in the team, and I think that's very important for uh, for our team. If you uh, if you lose if you lose the ball if, if you had the ball in your team, the other team can score. It's impossible. So and maybe the crowd is is the first time that the crowd uh, see. So. Maybe there was a reason why they started booing, but I think it's very important uh, to keep your ball on the team. Two goals P today, Pierre. Well done. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Mm. He says he didn't dive, but. Then...